What is going on, Governor's Chiss School here, and today we're gonna talk about how Artemisia and Ramses are going to be meta-changing in Rise of Kingdoms. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. We're gonna review how Ramses and Artemisia are completely game-changing for the meta in Rise of Kingdoms. If you want to know which commanders are going to show up on top and which commanders are going to start to fall down below, then you're going to want to watch this video all the way through. Like and subscribe if you're into commander guides so that you can get notifications about when these videos are going live. And let's get into the analysis. We're going to start with Ramses. This commander is doing some stuff that is really exciting and powerful and is going to give archers some punch. It also gives me a lot of concern for the longevity and health of Richard the First. Let's get a look at this commander and his skills and know that this is not going to replace commander guides. We will still come out with commander guides. We are in this video going to look at pairings. We're going to look at commanders and what they do. And we're going to talk about how the metagame and balance of commanders and what might be the next most powerful thing in Rise of Kingdoms is going to emerge. So Ramsey's first skill is relatively innocuous. It's good. It's good. 800 damage factor per second for two seconds and 25% defense reduction. At surface uh, face value, this looks good if we just look at some other skills, right? Normally, when there's a damage over time, like on Minamoto, you get some upfront damage and some damage over time. You get a higher amount of overall damage factor because that damage is being dealt over time. W why does that matter? You know, look, if you did more damage upfront, that means you take less damage from that enemy from their normal attacks and counterattacks. That means if they happen to do a skill attack during that window, if all the damage is upfront, then that skill attack they do, if it's got a damage factor, it's going to do less because you've done damage and they have less troops to do that damage with. So a commander like Ramses, he's doing more damage, but because it's over time, because it's over time, that's okay. The 25% stat reduction is actually very significant as well. If we compare to a commander like Ethelflaed, actually, she's got 800 damage factor instead of 1600, and she's debuffing three stats by 30%. So that gives you a sense of sort of the rough kind of value of these, uh, you know, I guess debuffs and damage. Uh, you do less damage when you've got a lot of sweet debuffs. Ethelflaed's got a few, Ramses has only one. But the damage over time is why that damage factor is higher. Um, the second skill is really not noteworthy, 80% archer attack. They have to be on the map, however, so I suppose that is relevant. He's not going to be a garrison commander. Uh, the next skill reduces skill damage taken. So this is a tanky archer, which is not something we're used to. Uh, you get even more attack over here and a bunch of speed if you're getting hit which is pretty compelling. Moving on, there's a chance for your normal attacks to heal you and to gain defense. This is not something we've gotten for our archers in the past, which is kind of exciting. So we've got some tankiness, we've got some debuffing, really nothing special so far until we get to the expertise skill. If you expertise this commander, who we're assuming is going to be in Mighty Governor, you stop all healing that that target would receive for two seconds. Now, this is terrifying for Richard I. Where do I see Ramses being totally gangbuster? My friends, I think this commander is going to change the way garrisons work in Ark of Osiris League. I've said it many, many times, card up in the top for my legendary tier list. I do believe, I do declare that I do believe that <laughs> Richard I is unequivocally the very best garrison commander for Ark of Osiris. He stalls so that you can get more troops to reinforce the structure, both by virtue of reducing damage taken and healing. The dude is just a beast. This makes it so you can't receive healing. Does that mean that the active skill of Richard I will fire off and nothing happens? You get no heal? Oh my gosh, that's terrifying. 
That is terrifying. I thought we'd seen hard counters. I thought Alexander the Great might be a hard counter to Richard I. Nope. This guy is. This guy. Now, they're archers. You would expect archers to counter infantry. So that all makes sense to me. That all makes sense to me. But let's talk for a minute about what the pairs would be. If you're going to use Ramses to take down Richard I, which I think is what his meta role is going to be, because nothing else in here is particularly special, all right? Like, you got some damage, you got some debuffs, you got some healing, like, whatever. You know, because we got commanders that do that. There's no unique effect until you expertise. So... This is also, by the way, elevating the active skill damage, which is pretty solid, um, and also reducing the debuff of the active skill, also very solid. Um, this is one of the better expertise skills that I think we've seen come into the game in a very, 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 very long time. Maybe a runner-up would be Attila, but like, dude, this is good. Um, this also, by the way, is going to hinder Wu Zetian, who has some healing, who's used for garrison. This commander is going to do work on garrisons. Funny that he's not actually a conquering commander. So, who do you pair with? Because this is modifying the active skill. The active skill. We need to fire off that active skill as much as possible. How can we do that? We need Rage Gen. A couple ways you can get that. First and foremost, Esong Primary for the skill tree, plus Art of Archery has a chance to generate extra rage. You know I think Esong is the literal best commander in Rise of Kingdoms, and like, ba-boom, baby. One more use for Esong. He is getting elevated in this context. I think that is a solid way to generate a lot of rage to power out those skills really quickly. Um, another commander you could pair with, but I think is a terrible idea, is Khan. Khan is reducing the rage requirement pretty substantially, but he needs all cavalry, and pff, man... Unfortunately, Ramses cares all about archers, so it's not it's not gonna work. I don't see that working. Um, you could pair with Ethelfled and bring mostly archers. You could do that. Um, if we just get a look at his skills, this increases archer stats. Uh, see, this is only archers. See, this is only archers. So I don't know. I don't know. I just. I feel like you're going to need to have an all-archer march here for Ramses, which, like, it is what it is. It limits our options here. Do I think Edward of Woodstock is a good pick? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Archer versatility skill. Yes, I like the skill tree, but Edward has a higher rage requirement, so that is not likely to be a pair I would go out of my way to make. I think Freddy would be an interesting pair, but both of them want Rage Gen, and neither of them really is particularly synergistic. I don't think that Caesar is a great choice. Not going to have enough Rage Gen. Uh, I think Mehmed is compelling, but also not compelling for the same reasons. I think that Freddy is not all that great. Um, Tamaris, I think, is fine, but doesn't really make sense. Um, you need not more Rage Gen but less Rage Gen, or some mechanic, and we'll talk about this really soon, um, to make it so she can poison more. So actually, our options at the legendary tier for commanders we might pair are very, very limited, in my opinion. With Ramses, I think your slam dunk pick is going to be Esong. Now, at the epic tier, I feel like we're missing the Rage Gen on Kusunoki, so he's not a choice I would make. You could use Joan of Arc, and that would be pretty gosh darn slick for buffing and debuffing as a combination, bringing full archers. In a similar vein, you could use Boudicca, buffing and debuffing, bring all archers. I guess not buffing, but mostly debuffing, actually, and healing, which is fine. Uh, and Herman is actually kind of an interesting choice. I don't know how I feel about Herman primary. This could be a thing. Let's walk through that for a second. Let's walk through that for a second. If you use Herman Primary with the skill tree to generate rage and fourth skill as a chance to generate rage, um, how would this work? The active skill of Herman is going to fire off. For the next two turns, the target is silenced. There's going to be one turn where they're silenced but no other active skill happens. On the next turn, they're still silenced and the active skill of Ramses would apply. After that, after that, um, now they're not going to be able to heal for two turns, and then the target could cast their healing ability. Yeah, actually, I think the combination of Herman 
And Ramsey's is sick good, like crazy good. I think this could get out of hand as an open field debuffing march because what you're doing is you're basically stalling the enemy from casting their active skill and then all but guaranteeing that if it's a Richard primary, and this does depend on the Richard being the primary. See, that depends on the Richard being the primary. We're, we're thinking this through here. Um, most people use Richard as the secondary. Okay, so if you're up against a Richard primary, Herman and uh, Ramses is going to be crazy good. Otherwise, it's not going to be as good, and I'm glad that we talked through that. See, this is why we talk about things. Um, the thing you want to silence is the Richard the first heal, um, and that would not actually work out, I think, that way um, at all if you've got a Herman primary. Uh, one other legendary I forgot to talk about is El Cid. Um, neither of them has Rage Gen. Both of them have the versatility tree. You could use an El Cid primary for the skill tree. Wouldn't be the worst. Uh, the one second silence, uh, and I guess disarm here, no use of active skills. That actually would be pretty decent. Maybe this is the pairing I was looking for. Maybe this is the pairing I was looking for. Let's walk through this. El Cid is going to use his active skill. On the next turn, the target is going to be disarmed. They're not going to be able to use an active skill. On the next turn, the target could use their active skill. Um, and also, we're going to apply the healing effect. Um, so that means that if Richard the First is the primary, then the heal will already have happened. But if Richard the First is the secondary, that means it hasn't happened yet. For the next two turns, the debuff should be applied. Yeah, okay, I'll sit as the play. Then there's a turn of downtime that the enemy has, and then there's a turn where, boom, this, the heal would go off, but it's debuffed. I'm pretty sure that that's how that would work, and that would be pretty powerful. El Cid Ramses could be really quite good. Still, though, there's, there's not quite as much Rage Gen there as I would like. I feel like the E-Song is probably the better pick overall, uh, but I do like that El Cid would give you a bunch of march speed and some extra damage, honestly, uh, extra damage boost to infantry. The disarming effect is honestly very synergistic. Um, you're really disrupting what the opponent is trying to do. If I was trying to make an open field march that is being disruptive, I think the El Cid Ramses pair is actually pretty good. Again, Cid primary for the skill tree. Um, I would use that in a swarming capacity to hit a garrison. And this is where I think things are kind of interesting. Um, I think that swarming the garrison with a commander like El Cid and Ramses is pretty sweet. Um, but I don't know that you should necessarily be rallying with that pair. Um, yes, there is healing here, which I think is pretty good. And actually, maybe that, this is better than I, but maybe better for rallying than I was giving it credit. Um, there is skill damage taken reduction, which is pretty good for rallying. Maybe this could be good for rallying. I'm not entirely sure yet. Before we make a verdict, let's start talking about the next commander as well, because there's so much to talk about with this commander too. Artemisia breathes new life into Tamaris. Let's talk about why. Now you may be wondering, like, whoa, Chiskul, in breathes life into Tamaris? What are you talking about? Here's what's going on here that I think is pretty cool. Artemisia, um, first skill, is going to do damage to herself. Now this we need to talk about before we even go any further. You do damage to yourself and then 1,800 damage factor hitting up to three enemies. Where is this good? This is good when you don't care about your troops getting damaged. This is good when there are many enemies to hit. I have concern about this if you are um, rallying a garrison because you're hurting yourself and 100% of your wounds are dead. That seems really bad. I feel, and I also feel really not good about this, if you're defending a structure that is 100% dead when you would have Sev wounds. Like, uh, you know, the Lost Temple, for instance, or I guess the Ziggurat. Like, this is dangerous. When is it good, though? It's good if you're defending your city. Although, I would rather have... Like, when you think about the net damage factor, and this is another interesting idea, um, we're doing 1,800 damage factor out. But if we just subtract from that the 300 damage factor we do to ourselves, that's really like 1,500 damage factor. That's actually not good. 
Um, that's that's not good at all on an active skill. Um, even on a commander that's got as vanilla an active skill as Khan, we're getting 1,700 damage factor, okay? So w the upside here on Artemisia has to pay, for, pay off. It has to pay for itself. The only way that works is if you hit at least two targets. If you hit two targets or more, you're getting sick value from the first skill. But if you're not hitting two or more targets, you're not getting value. And that I find really fascinating about her as a commander. Um, where is this going to be really good? I think this is going to be really good in Ark of Osiris. Is it a coincidence that this is showing up right before the finals of Arc League? Come on. Come on. We got two months to max this commander. And they come from wheels. So like, anyways, this commander I think could be really good in Arc because um, also for defending an Arc because you don't care about Sev Wounds and Ark of Osiris. Like, not really. Um, that doesn't matter. Your, your troops are all healed at the end of the battle anyways. So good in Ark of Osiris, good for defending things where you don't care about your own troops getting hurt. But this is just getting started. 40% of stats on the second skill. That doesn't really directionally indicate what we should do with her. Although, health and defense, tanky stats. Um, continuing on, reduces incoming attack damage. Now, Again, very good in Ark of Osiris when you're getting swarmed by lots of marches. Um, has a chance to disarm the target. Also really good in that context. Continuing onward, here's where things get really wacky. When your rage accumulates to 80%, there's a 50% chance to silence yourself for 3 seconds and increase all damage dealt by 50% for 5 seconds. So let's walk through how that would actually work mechanically, and where this could be really good. Let's explain this for a second. So your rage hits 80%, okay? Um, let's say the silence fires off. So your rage over the next three seconds is going to get to 100%. You're going to have enough rage gen for that. Pretty sure you would. Um, because even if you're very slow rage gen, you should get there. Um, so you're going to be able to fire off your active skill after these three seconds. So on the fourth second, the active skill of the primary commander will fire off. If that's Artemisia, it will be her. Um, in the fifth second, you still have the damage boost, but there's no more active skills. And in the sixth second, now the secondary commander is going to fire off their active skill, but they're not going to have this damage boost. They're not going to have this damage boost, which is pretty interesting. I think that's how that would work. I think that is how that works. Because the silence is going to last for those three seconds. So, I mean, this is, you see I'm like a head scratcher here. So, um, where is this good? Let's say that you're using Tamaris as a secondary. How would that work out? Um, you're going to get some number of extra seconds where you're silenced, not firing off your active skill. It might only be one or two extra seconds, but those one or two extra seconds might just be enough time to accumulate on Tamaris an extra set or two of the poison stacks, tipping her over into getting her bonus damage for having more poison stacks onto the target. This is almost exactly as I predicted might be the case, that new commanders would breathe fresh life into Tamaris. Now, this is doing so in a way I didn't expect, although I didn't, I didn't say they might do this, which is to give more commanders that can take advantage of what she's offering. Definitely, definitely the case with Artemisia. Definitely the case. Um, but in addition, even if you had Tamaris and Edward together in a separate march, um, you are going to benefit if you're using Artemisia, because the skill damage taken debuff from Tamaris will apply. Card up in the top if you want to see me call that shot about Tamaris being super valuable once skill damage comes back into the meta, which I think we're seeing that unfold right now. Um, let's get a look at the expertise skill real quick in case this changes our assessment. Normal attacks have a 10% chance to cause the target to continuously take damage. 400 factor. Wow, it's a lot. Each second. Um for three seconds. So that's 1,200 damage factors, really good, um, but also increases their skill damage by 15%. Aha. So uh, where is this good? Obviously countering Attila Takeda. I mean, I think this commander, Artemisia and one other commander, I mean, they're just designed to be together 
Maybe it's Esong is your pick. They are designed to be together in a garrison and just slay stuff. It's a counter to Attila Takeda. It is doing things that we kind of want in Ark of Osiris, which is area of effect damage, where, like, look, like this 300 damage to yourself is fine. You don't care about that in that context. The only thing I'll say that's, like, kind of a downside is she's got the defense tree. I don't love that. Like, I really wanted big rage gen. So I guess the commander you'd use as the primary would be Esong in that context. Um, use Esong as the primary. That way, his active skill, which is going to do the circle AoE, is going to get this big boost of damage over here. Artemisia uh, won't get that buff, but that also is not so bad because then she's not doing as much damage to herself. <laughs> so awkward. Yeah, that's right. The extra damage you deal over here means you deal more to yourself over there. Super weird. What kind of stuff is she into anyways? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so, what else changes in this patch? What contextually do I think changes? Um, couple things. And, and I guess we need to blaze through pairings real quick. Um, Artemisia with Esong, I think it's a solid pair. Art, uh, probably one of the better pairs. Artemisia with El Cid. I think is pretty solid. Um, I like the march speed if you're moving around. El Cid has actually got all skills that are sort of relevant in a garrison. Sort of. Um, I guess the march speed isn't relevant, but otherwise you got a lot of punch on here, which I think is pretty solid. I think they're decent as a pair together. You can really keep a target disarmed for a lot of the time, uh, which like, man, reducing their normal attack damage to zero for a turn it's kind of like healing yourself for a lot. It's pretty powerful. Um, Artemisia could be interesting with Mehmed. Um, I guess you'd want to use Mehmed as the primary. Uh, that way you've got more rage gen. But Mehmed really wants a rage engine. Artemisia is not bringing that. She is bringing AOE, which is good. Um, Freddy, yeah, about the I get the same sort of feelings here. They'd be fine, but not amazing. Caesar, be fine, but not amazing. Um, we're missing the rage engine, right? Like, that's the thing I want to see. Why do I want the rage engine, by the way? Like, look, the more um, that I get to fire off this active skill, right, the more I'm getting this damage boost, potentially, the better. That That's why I'm after that. If we're into AoE and we're saying we are, then that means we want this to go off very frequently. Um, I think that, obviously, Artemisia primary with a Tamaris secondary is really solid in the open field. Um, I would use them to debuff a garrison. I don't know that I would rally with them because Tamaris is really missing the sort of tankiness that I would like to see. Although, although, let's see here. Um, in decreases incoming normal attack damage. There's some tankiness in here. Health and defense is some pretty good tankiness. I don't know. Maybe Artemisia and Tamaris breathe some life into Archer rallies. Maybe. I'm, I'm not entirely sure of these commanders. Like, what am I rallying with? Um, at the epic tier, I think Kusunoki is interesting. He's got the skill tree, a lot of stats, a lot of damage. It's good. Not amazing. I think Boudica and Joan of Arc are better in some ways because they've got more rage gen. That's doing the thing I wanted to see. I think Herman's a really solid pair for that rage gen and the march speed, assuming you're going to be in the open field or in a garrison, but, you know, defending a garrison should be best left to two legendary commanders. The last pair I think we got to look at that we haven't talked about yet is Ramses and Artemisia. Should we pair them together? And if so, who should be the primary and what are we trying to accomplish? I don't know that these two commanders are particularly synergistic. The thing that I'll call out here is that a healing factor is very strong for rallies. It is very, very strong to do some healing when you're rallying stuff. It gives you so much sustain. It's a part of what made Attila Takeda very good is that they do that healing um, on the active skill of Takeda. They're getting a lot of healing. So... I also think the tankiness over here is pretty good. If you were rallying something with Artemisia and Ramses, I think it would be okay. But because this skill doesn't do anything for you, 
I mean, not when you're rallying something. I feel like Artemisia's probably not the pick. I feel like these two paired together, like, is probably not a thing. One needs to be in the map. The other needs to be in the garrison. I'm not saying it's bad. I just don't think it's good. And what I find so fascinating about all these archer pairings is that I haven't seen one that's just like a total slam dunk for rallying stuff. Um, I think that Edward and Tamaris is really good, but missing the tankiness that we need for leading a rally. So I think a Tamaris should be there to debuff stuff. I think Edward Esong is really strong, and maybe all these other commanders play a supporting role. I just don't know yet how that is going to unfold, and we'll just have to test. Right? I'm not saying we'll just see, but we'll have to test. Realistically, when will this impact Ark of Osiris League? At what point does League get impacted? And I, I wonder, right? Like, when should you expertise these commanders? Um, Artemisia is a wheel commander. And I expect we're going to have five wheels with Artemisia. That is a solid two and a half months. Uh, Arc League will be, I think, over at that point. So to expertise this commander will be a pretty major commitment. And there's nothing really here where I'm like, man, you'd better expertise this. You have to have this for League. I don't know. I think they could be a really good garrison commander with Esong. Could be. But I don't know yet. I also think that Ramses, on the other hand, is in a similar position but slightly different. See, now with Ramses, he's going to come from Mighty Governor. And what that means is that as soon as you, you know, get a bunch of sculptures from one Mighty Governor, if you're going all in on just one and not any of the others, at that point you could expertise him. And this expertise skill, whoo, this is savage. Healing cut off entirely. Wow. I mean, I look at my comments and everybody's like, oh, this commander's so hot. And I'm like, okay, but this commander <laughs> right over here makes it so you can't heal. <laughs> that seems really busted. That seems really busted. Um, between the two, I'm inclined to say that he is the better commander. Um, I was really pumped to put archers into my garrison for my city. It could be that an Esong primary with Artemisia secondary would be better than what I'm doing now. Maybe. Um, damaging myself feels really weird. The AoE seems really inefficient for defending your city. It's highly unlikely to me that I will be facing two marches that are standing in close proximity to hit with a forward-facing fan, which means 1,500 damage factor is just not very exciting to me. Although there is anti-Attila, Takeda stuff in here, they're just not so busted that I'm like, oh yeah, this this changes everything. I mean, these commanders feel balanced. And what does that mean to me for the meta as a whole? I think you're going to have choices. And I think that's a very healthy place for the game to be. You're going to have choices around which commanders you use to do things. Some will be better than others at doing certain things, but directionally they'll be roughly in a tighter pack than what we've had recently, where Attila Takeda was disproportionately good at rallies at the cost of being good at other things. That's my assessment of how these commanders may shape up the meta. Expect the next time we do a video about Artemisia or Ramses, we'll have unlocked them and we'll have done some amount of texting or exploration to so start to figure out where they're really good, and we'll release a commander guide. So if you're into commander guides, please do like and subscribe. That's your way of saying thanks, Chiskel, for the video. I really enjoyed this. This was a good use of my time. And if you made it to the end of the video, I mean, gosh darn it. You must think this was pretty entertaining. <laughs> so throw down that like. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom. Oh, and P.S., don't put any Universal Legendary Commander sculptures in anybody until we know what the heck is good. I'm not, not going to spend a single one. Nope.